Hello. This is our next part in our wheel caster project that we have adopted from Wasatch High School. Um, Mr. Gary Roberts' tutorial on SolidWorks, we are adapting it to Inventor. For this part, we're going to create the axle for our caster. Now, the axle can again be done either through a series of extrusions or through a single revolution. We are going to do it as a revolution again just because that is about the easiest way to do this. Okay, we begin by simply creating a rectangle that's roughly three inches long. Okay, so each box you can see on the grid is roughly an inch. Next, I'm going to take and I'm going to remove a couple of chunks of this to notch out a few things. Now, once I've got that, I will use my trim command to trim out and make the notches I need. In this case, our notches should appear roughly like that, a shoulder for each end. of this axle. Once we have that, we'll apply some dimensions to control this. We're going to begin by taking the overall dimension. This is three inches long total. So we're going to control that. Um, the next, each shoulder should be 0.75 in length. So we'll control that. Now, the next part we have to worry about is the shoulder itself, the overall the diameter of the part is to be one inch. In our case, we're only dealing with the radius, that's 0.5. So that means that for the shoulders to have a diameter of 0.75, we need to have a 0.375 diameter. Now, in SolidWorks, you can actually put in for this an equation. Tell it to be equal to 0.75 times 0.5, and it'll understand it. In Inventor, it will do the same thing. So. If you don't know what it is for sure, you can make the machine do it for you. Now, once we've created this, that's all we really need to do our revolution. Now, next step. We finish this sketch. We go up here to our modeling tools. We pick the revolve tool. There is only one profile available. We do need to pick the axis, though, because we did not set a centerline axis. We need to tell it that this is our axis around which to revolve. And once that's done, we're good. We simply click OK. We've got it. Now, because we didn't do it in the sketch, we do need to apply the chamfer to each end of this axle. There should be a chamfer applied to this end, so I'm going to use the chamfering tool. I'm going to click on each end of the piece. Now, nowhere in here does it have the distance set. This one defaulted to 0.125, which happens to be what we want. Normally, it defaults to whatever the last use was. But in this case, we're going to leave it right where it's at, and we're going to apply that. Okay, now once we've got this, that's our part. If we want to, we can change its properties at this point, but in our case, we're simply going to save. We're going to put it in the same folder we did the last one. We've got a caster bushing. This is going to be a caster axle. We're going to tell it to save. Now we're going to change its properties around for just a minute. We're going to go to I properties. We're going to go to physical properties. In this case, default material probably wouldn't be good enough. This would most likely be made of steel. Um, if we had carbon steel, I'd use it or you know some other durable material. I'm just going to tell it to be an alloy steel because aluminum ain't going to cut it. We're going to hit apply, go OK. We've got that. Hit the save button one more time. This is all we need to do. It's ready to go. Thank you. We'll show you the next part in our next segment.